In this problem, we have a mass at the end of a spring that is compressed. Now, the, the mass is 0.85 kilograms, the spring constant is 95 newtons per meter, and x, the stretch in the spring, in this case, actually, compression in the spring is 0.24 meters. Our x equals zero spot of unstretched length for the spring is right here. As you can see, we've compressed the spring, positive direction this way. So we're given four questions, basically A, B, C, D. We want to find the spring force. We want to find the angular frequency. We want to find the maximum velocity and the maximum acceleration. These are all simple one, one equation problems. Now, the spring force, is given by the equation kx. Okay? Now, k is our spring constant, x is our stretch in our spring, and we find out positive or negative just by looking at which direction it's going to be. Now, we know positive is this way. We know that the spring is compressed this way, so that our force is going to be acting to the right. So we can plug in k of 95 newtons per meter x of 0.24 meters and that comes out to a value of 22.8 newtons or after rounding 23 newtons to the right. Now, if you look on the formula sheet, you might notice that the force is given as negative kx. Well, if we don't want to have to worry about thinking about which direction it's going to be just logically, we can just use the numbers. Okay, now it'll work out this, our positives will work out this way. These numbers are going to be the same. We have to make sure our positive and negatives work out. We have negative, okay, k is going to still be 95. And x, in this case, though, is actually negative, right? Because x is 0 is here, so if we push backwards, we have negative 0.24 meters there. So we'll get the same answer, and the, the actual the direction will come out in our positive or negative. So it might be easier to do it this way, where now we have that negative times that negative gives you a positive, which just gives you the same, 23 newtons. This time, you didn't have to think about which direction it was pushing, because it's positive, so it's pushing in a positive direction. So it's just another way of doing that. Now, B was the angular frequency of this oscillating system. Now we know omega, which is our angular frequency, is equal to root k over m. So we plug in k of 95 newtons per meter, and divide our weight, or sorry, a mass of 0.85 kilograms and this gives a, a value of 10.571 radians per second. Now we, we round this to get a mega of 11 radians per second answer here, so answer here. Now, the units work out because a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So a kilogram, cancel this kilogram, left with meter per second squared, meter cancels with this meter, so we're le just left with over with second squared on the bottom, take the square root, seconds, and since it's an omega calculation, it's radians per second. C is our max velocity. Okay, so we actually have a formula for velocity of an oscillating system. V equals negative A omega sine omega t. Okay, now we're looking for the maximum. Sine just oscillates between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so it's going to be a maximum when this sine omega t value is negative 1. So that negative cancels with this one. We don't really care what that is. We just know that it will be negative 1 at some point. 
So our maximum is going to be a omega. And it's actually a maximum of velocity when we hit this x equals zero point. Because at that point, there's no force in the spring. The compression of the spring right now causes the mass to accelerate this way. And as it gets to this point, as it keeps going, it'll start to stretch a bit and the force will be going back, slowing it down. So the mass velocity occurs at the unstretched point. So V max equals A omega. Let's just plop in our amplitude. Our amplitude is going to be the max distance away from the x equals zero point, which is our starting point of 2.24 meters. 24 meters times omega of, we've determined to be 11, but we'll put in all our numbers here, make sure we have an accurate answer. So that gives us a Vmax, multiplying those two, of 2.5, this is again rounded, meters per second to our two significant digits. So that's answer for that. D is the exact same as our max velocity, except we're doing acceleration max. So the acceleration formula is negative a omega squared cos omega t. So we do the same thing. We say cos omega t is going to be make this a max when this is negative 1. So a max equals a omega squared. Plug in up A of 0.24 meters, and our omega of 10.571. Square that, and now we multiply those two. So the max acceleration occurs, and it is 27 meters per second squared. Those are all our final answers.